Hi friends, it's Kayla. I could not be more excited about this childhood favorites. This is the one that I've been most excited to film since two years ago when I started with fourth grade. I have been so excited about eighth grade. Eighth grade was a really formative year for me and the books that I get to read I am the most excited about any of my selections and I'm especially excited because last night I found everything I found absolutely everything I'm gonna need for this video and I'm very excited about it when I tell you I kept every card that was ever given to me I really kept every card that was given to me this one is from my 14th birthday which would have been eighth grade who made this for me Jessica. This one's a birthday card. This one's a birthday invitation. Come to a party June 19th from Lindsay telling me to bring goggles because she lived on the beach. And this one is a thank you card from one of my sparks. I had a spark group. I would have been a pathfinder at this time. I found some pictures of me scuba diving. I found a picture walking around. This is the first trip I ever took without my parents in eighth grade. And then this one was at like a camp. It might have been from seventh grade. I even found the pictures that I lost from a couple videos back where I couldn't find a whole pack of pictures. I found them. Um, this between seventh and eighth grade is definitely my most awkward years. I had to return here first because this is the photo I wanted to find, but that was taken right here that was it was right here and here's one other one i found of me rock climbing indoor rock climbing and i'm wearing a shirt that says canadian girls rock i'm gonna have to show you these at home because i need to blur out people's faces so this was my elementary school i came here before and showed you the whole field um up here is where we didn't come before where it was like triple jump and long jump and all that stuff and my high school is actually walking distance from my elementary school so we will head over there. I'll give you a little sneak peek of my yearbook for now. First off, on like the first day of school, uh, we all lined up to take this photo because there was this um, giant fire that burned down like 35,000 hectares and affected like evacuated 20,000 people, including our family. Pretty much all the houses on the uh, street above us burnt down. I think like 300 houses burnt down. So this was like a thank you thing to the firefighters. I was in the Y. Oh, I wrote it. It's also in the back and I put a little arrow that said that's me. This book was even made with all of like the photos that people had from the summer of the fire. This is the park that my parents got married and this is the street right above ours and this one's from across the lake and you can see our house would be like right around here if you look right behind us that is okanagan mountain park which is where the fire was and then down here if you look that's where i would have girl guide meetings oh, i also have i can't show you um i can't show you that because i wrote over everybody's face what i thought of them um but i'll zoom in and show you where i was we like i think it was probably the same day we lined up in our numbers so ours was 08 because that's the year that we graduated i was at the bottom of the zero and you can see i'm wearing a princess shirt and i have flippy out hair and that might have been the same day that this photo was taken because I look the exact same. Um, I used Josie from Josie and the Pussycats as my life inspiration and I wanted to get my hair to flip out like hers. It didn't, it didn't quite work out. But there's me looking disgusting um, with a giant ice cream sundae that everyone shared but it looks like it was just for me. And if you look closely you can see dice earrings. When I tell you eighth grade your earrings were like your moment to shine. We put all of our personality in our earrings. You would go to like our Dean's or Claire's and buy their $5 pack and you would find like little surprise things in it. I'm gonna show you some of the earrings that were the vibe at this time and I owned all of them. And I would wear like one dice and then one something else and you'd mix and match and it was like, it was a thing. It was really, trying to find my personality in eighth grade. And there's me, my heavy bangs, my glasses, my crimped hair, but I've only crimped like the front half of it because that's all I could see. And then you can't tell, but I'm wearing a Winnie the Pooh shirt. <laughs> okay, now we've made it to my high school. Do a little pan. This is the back of it. <laughs> my head's just in the pan. 
It didn't look anything like this though when I was here. Rob went to high school like five kilometers away, so we didn't meet for a couple more years. But we always heard a rumor, because his school was in the more like dangerous part of town. We always heard that there was like metal detectors and stuff. When I met a bunch of people from like KSS, um, they always told me that because we were in the rich part of town that the rumor was that we had metal detectors and it was always this like misunderstanding between the high schools Okay, they're on spring break right now, but we're keeping our distance still uh, This is the front of the school, but this this really looks different I think I actually have some videos weirdly from like later years of the front of the school So I'll put that in if I have it Over here was wood shop and auto, and this is where my homeroom was. My room, my homeroom was the wood, wood shop. Was it really? Yeah. Weird. On my first day of school, I cried because I couldn't find my homeroom. So that was my introduction to high school. Nice. Okay, if we look through these doors, oh, oh, you can. This is the, this is what we called the multi. At your school, we called, they, you called it the NPR. Multi-purpose room, yeah. Yeah. There's a little store in there to buy food. Oh, yeah. We had vending machines. I'm sure that'll come up later in this video. This is where, like, basically the cafeteria was, but then also where we would put on plays. It's really a multi-purpose room. Yeah. Definitely seventh and eighth grade was the most, like, insecure, uh, I have ever been which is perhaps why somebody purchased for me um, the nobody's perfect journal which I crossed out and wrote my body's perfect I might actually save this for another installment because we have so many other things to go through including a journal <laughs> but the cool thing about this is I actually filled it out like four different times throughout my entire time in high school I would choose a different color pen and I would like update my answers to all the questions so it'd be like can you think of a time that you acted in a way that didn't demonstrate a positive trait or quality you have and then i filled it out and i filled it out again and then i filled it out again but i just want you to know that this this was a thing for me at this time which leads me to one of the first things i'm going to read for this video and that is chicken soup for the teenage soul i'm very interested to dive back into this and see like what type of stories anecdotes from other teenagers I was reading and how they impacted me and the thing about insecure no friend having seventh grade Kayla is she was determined for a fresh start in eighth grade. I wanted a whole new look. I wanted a whole new vibe. I remember challenging um, four different classes in seventh grade. So when you go into eighth grade, you obviously just like take the next grade of courses for all your courses like science and English and math but I thought hey this is my opportunity to get in with a whole new group of people so I challenged I think math science English and probably like socials so I could get in with the ninth graders instead of just like continuing with the people that I went to school with my entire life, I wanted to start fresh in that way. And I got approved for all of them. My teacher signed off on all of it. What I failed to realize was that I was already gonna have a whole bunch of new people to go to school with because like high schools, you know, there's three feeder schools that go into it. This is the forest between the fields where we would come hang out. So by the time I was like a month into the school year, I realized that I had made all of these friends in like homeroom and in um, band class and in cooking class. And I ended up dropping all of my ninth grade classes except for I think English. So I found my laminated class schedule. And what's different about our high school, I don't know if it's still a thing or I don't know if other schools have adopted it, but we only had two classes a day. So each of our classes were three and a half hours. What was the craziest about it was that like you would have say science. So like I had science eight with Mrs. Lang in room 134. And then I would have that the first half of the year. And then I wouldn't have it the second half of the year. But then if you didn't have science the first half of ninth grade, you basically went an entire year without having science. Your school, you had the same classes the entire year, right? Yeah. So like if you like, had science first thing Monday morning, you always had it the entire year. Monday would be ABCD, second yeah. day would be EFGH, and then it'd be BCDA. They were just, the classes would rotate. So it was the same with us, but we only had two classes a day. So it was like, it was either day one and three or day two and four. Okay. Yeah. So I doubled that. But your classes were half the length. Half the length with the same amount of homework. So I had science, math, band, French, home ec, homeroom, CAP, career and personal planning, my favorite, socials, English, and PE. 
I had Mr. Augustine, who was my absolute favorite English teacher. I think I had him, I must have had him twice in high school because I didn't even remember I had him in eighth grade. But I guess I didn't, I had him for, I was in ninth grade honors, which was the confusing part about honors classes is that like I wasn't just an eighth grader in ninth grade English class, I got signed up for ninth grade honors. So not just like the, I was with the best of the ninth graders. The best part of my schedule is where it says I owe fees. <laughs> For now, that's all I'm gonna show you about where I was. There was a lot of different like places that we hung out, but mostly it was at friends' houses. And there are so many places that I wanna take you in future years, so I'm gonna keep it to just showing you the high school. And before I get into anything else, I think I need to read this. So this is the only journal that I kept, I think, uh, for the entirety of high school except for 12th grade. And I skimmed through some of this in a live once, but I haven't gone through and read the entire thing. But I think I need to do that to reference like some friendships that were going on, different things. Because like I said, eighth grade was so formative for me. It gave me a whole new outlook on life. I had so many friends in eighth grade. I was introduced to all of these new people and I really felt like I belonged for the first time. And I know that this is gonna be a whole mess. And I'm pretty sure a book series that I'm gonna read this week is going to be like referenced in here. And it's what I've been looking forward to reading this entire childhood series, and that is the Georgia Nicholson, the Angus Thongs and for Frontal Snogging series. But I probably only would have read like the first maybe two or three in eighth grade. Speaking of British authors, I'll give you a peek into another thing that I'll be reading this week. And it is The Undomestic Goddess. This is a book after Stargirl that I called my favorite book for many, many years. I forced all of my friends to read it. I first read the Shopaholic series and I did enjoy it. I think I come back to that one in a future childhood favorites, we might reread it. But when I read this, I feel like eighth grade was the last time I read and loved adult romance. This was just like my favorite thing and um, was one of the reasons that I got a job in housekeeping this and blue crush and made in manhattan <laughs> basically this is a story of mistaken identity and i'm dying to reread it there are a couple other books one that's going to be really shocking i think to everyone that we'll get into later first i need to take a peek into this so reading through my journal was pretty much just as embarrassing as i thought it would be and it just reminded me how awful this age was for like having crushes and dating or whatever because this was the first time that I had like boys as like in my friend group and I remember this like constant conversation about like what boys like what girls anytime you'd show any attention or be nice to anybody it was like oh she has a crush on him and then you'd suddenly have like enemies with some other girl that you've never even spoken to because like she has a crush on that boy there was so much friendship drama in here and just like drama that I created because I thought that I liked this boy who was just like my best friend and not even interested in women. This was actually only the second half of eighth grade, which I didn't realize because the first half of eighth grade is when I had a boyfriend. And then in this journal, one of my friends ends up dating the boy that I dated in the first half of eighth grade. So that was interesting to discover. Basically, I was dating this boy, we'll call him T, and all of my little girlfriends had boyfriends and everybody was like matching up and there was this one boy and me and everyone was like, you guys are so similar, you're both like the funny ones of the group. I say funny like that because really they just meant like the uncool one, the fat one of the group, the not as pretty one. And that's why we were supposedly a good match. Um, oh man, do I wanna get into my like toxic friendships in eighth grade? I don't know. I had one girl, we were at a sleepover once and she, we were lying next to each other and she turned over right before we were falling asleep. She was like, I'm so glad you're fat. And I was like, what? She was like, I'm so glad you're fat because you make me look skinny. And I was like, cool, went home. It was like 11 o'clock at night, left. Terrible sleepover. But like shout out to me for standing up for myself. Honestly, my friendship with that girl um, was really just like karma. We've talked about like me not being a good friend, not knowing, like just like not getting it in elementary school. And I feel like it all came back to me in eighth grade with this one specific girl. We were the ultimate frenemies. One time in sewing class, she sabotaged my pants. In my high school, um, in eighth grade, you learned like how to sew a pair of fleece, 
pajama pants. Pajama pants were like the trend at this time too, like you wore them under your jeans. So when boys would pull down your pants outside, which was, it was just like a thing, you had a whole another layer underneath. And I was sewing mine, I remember them so well. I remember going to the fabric store, I remember my parents like not being able to afford to buy fabric for me to make these freaking pants. So I got the cheapest ones in the store. It was already embarrassing enough being like, the biggest girl in my friend group and then we're all in sewing class having to like cut like measure each other <sighs> and then having to like cut out your fabric in front in front of everyone and then everyone's like holding theirs up my friend offered to help me and intentionally like cut the whole like what do you call it from like the crotch to the waist like that whole chunk she cut clean off so it was just like two legs with just like this little bit of fabric and I couldn't go get more fabric so my teacher was like mm, just complete them and then i had to wear them in order to like show them at the end to get my grade anyway there was all this drama between t and this girl and my other friend i don't think we ever actually like went on a date but we were like school boyfriend and girlfriend so we'd like walk around the halls and hold hands and then we were in science class and we were partners and he like wrote on my hand like his name or that he, I belonged to him or something weird like that. And then I like broke up with him. That guy ended up dating my friend. I went on their date with them. And then I just pined over another boy for the rest of eighth grade. Um, in regards to the vending machines, just cause I brought that, I swear I'm gonna read at some point. I brought up the vending machines because in eighth grade, <laughs> me and this boy staged like a protest. Um, firstly about the prices of the vending machine and then later in the year the options in the vending machine um i don't know how this came up i don't know who originally like brought it up but i found myself in a meeting with me and like four of my friends in the principal's office us and the principal telling the principal that the vending machines were too unhealthy and then there's the school store as well i don't know if we like heard of a movement at other schools of getting like only healthy options and i feel like that is a thing now in high schools it definitely didn't happen in our time but i think like right after we graduated they changed all of the vending machines from like they were just pure chocolate bars to like granola bars and health bars or whatever so that's like one of my biggest memories with this boy that i talk not stop about in here and then of course i put that boy on my own like snogging scale as per the georgia nicholson series another memory with him i talk about in here is watching the movie 13 which i didn't actually remember that i for sure read in eighth grade so i'm so glad that this confirmed that for me so that's something we're gonna watch this week um i'm planning a live movie night for my channel members i'll be doing one every single month but this month we're gonna watch something from 2003 so i'm super excited to watch some of those this week for the nostalgia we're gonna have to watch the angus thongs and full frontal snogging movie just for fun but i didn't end up referencing that book or any book in here which i was hoping to find but i didn't but i did have like my own little snogging scale so i know that that book definitely happened for the first time in eighth grade first i'm going to read uh chicken soup for the teenage soul because i think reading other people's stories will make me feel better about the mortification i feel skimming through this and talking about it so um i just wrapped this up i skimmed through a good portion of it i read the first like third and then i was skimming and just going to the parts that i was more interested in because there are like different sections so there's like a section about friendship a section about relationships and one called like the hard stuff or something like that um side note these aren't written by teenagers <laughs> they're written for teenagers i am just out of my mind today so most of them are from adults talking about their teenage experience or a lot of them were even younger it was like referencing things they learned in like third and fifth grade and the goal is to like give advice kind of to teenagers by just like sharing experiences i thought it was fine as usual seeing as it came out like 17 years ago there are definitely like some issues with certain language but these are also like personal stories so you can only change and edit like so much of them as expected most of them came from a pretty like cis straight perspective all of the relationships referenced but there was a lot of stories about like my gay friend 
did this, taught me this. My friend who is bound to a wheelchair was one of the phrases used. Here's how they're an inspiration to me. How do I even review something like this? I definitely didn't have any memories of like actually reading it, so it didn't do anything in that way. And as I'm not a teenager, it didn't teach me anything or support me in any way. There are some stories from actual teenagers in here, like basically like five of these would come out every single year and you could like send in your own response and then have an opportunity to be like featured in here. There were a couple people that are now authors. It covered some really dark topics, it covered some light topics. From my memory of reading this as a teen, I think I was more just like interested in other people's lives. It wasn't that I enjoyed like self-help kind of books and I still don't seek out self-help books so I don't have any. I, that's it. But speaking of genres I don't read a lot of, let's move over to some romance. So I have this and one other book that I'm really excited to show you that you do not see coming. But from what I remember, The Undomestic Goddess um, is about mistaken identity. It's about this woman who, I don't know, she's going through something and she ends up on someone's doorstep for some reason, knocks on the door, maybe like her car broke down or something, and they open the door and assume that she is there for an interview to be like their housekeeper. Since she doesn't have anything really going for her, she goes along with it and then falls in love with I think the gardener. I haven't reread this in at least 13 years and I think it's gonna be so fun. Okay reading update. I only got like 60 pages into An Undomestic Goddess. I am really enjoying it already. I forgot she was a lawyer so like that's why her life is so stressful and that's why she has so much responsibility and then she really messes up and she just flees and like doesn't tell anybody she just needs to get away and that's how she ends up on this family's doorstep so that's where we are right now it was a really good amount of setup and now the story is taking off but instead of reading i have a lot of things to do today so i'm just sitting down to film a haul and then i have to film something else and then i have a live movie night so some movies that came out in 2003 that i was watching at this time were Uptown Girls and Just Married and 13. I really wanted to rewatch Grind, but that is like nowhere on the internet for everybody to watch. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days was a good one. I think that would have been some interesting commentary. And the vote was for Freaky Friday, which is very fun. Everybody say hi in the comments so you can show up in my childhood favorites vlog. Okay, it's actually been a couple days. It's shaping up to be a really really long week and i'm super tired freaky friday nostalgia four out of five um enjoyment like at this age in that movie at its time oh two and a half out of five there's still a lot to love about freaky friday but it is really rooted in just like the memories, how much I loved Lindsay Lohan and Chad Michael Murray. It's a really well-known popular movie, so I'm sure many of you have not only seen it, but have probably watched it recently. Actually, I wanna know like what was the first thing for all of you who probably got Disney Plus right when it came out, what was the first thing that you rewatched? I think mine was Cadet Kelly. <laughs> but I feel like Freaky Friday is kind of a, a classic that I bet a lot of people went to I don't know so I'm sure you'd agree that watching it 18 years after the fact there's a lot more like uncomfortable things but it was a really fun movie night I had a great time and on the continuing to be positive note I finished The Undomestic Goddess and I definitely see why it was a favorite and it absolutely holds up and I'm so glad it's so funny that I talked about in this vlog already how eighth grade me was so determined for a fresh start that's exactly what this book is about she even has this whole conversation about it and how she needs to start fresh and there's conversations about like feminism because she goes from this being this high-powered career woman to like cleaning the toilets is what a lot of people end up referencing and how it's like a step back for womanhood and I really enjoyed how those conversations were tackled I love Samantha I really connect with Samantha and I was like 
blushing at the adorable scenes between her and Nathaniel and I was laughing like just like chuckling to myself while reading there's a couple scenes where she just like doesn't know how to interact with him and it's just like really adorable I would without a doubt never pick up a book like this for the first time now but the memories of reading this definitely drove a lot of my enjoyment for my next pick we're headed into the closet because i have a couple things to choose from i wish i could show you everything i have in here because i've just like been stockpiling childhood favorites for so long i've been having such great luck at the thrift store recently like i have stuff into grade 12 like already and prepared i wish i could spoil everything for you i will tell you one thing though that isn't for this one but it is in the next one because all in the same week i found this at the thrift store in like perfect condition also found out that it's a graphic novel so i picked it up and found out that it's now becoming a movie and the trailer was in my subscription box so i know this isn't for this vlog but monster i'm really looking forward to reading like with liam i was just so caught off guard when the trailer showed up so just wanted to let you know it's a thing sometimes i feel like it would be interesting if you read some of my childhood favorites like reread or read for the first time before i vlog them because then you will like know everything i'm talking about so just know that this is coming up and then i have two fear street books i thought i had more than this but i've been really looking forward to reading one of these after i reread goosebumps i was like one day i'm gonna get to read fear street again and today's that day i picked up both of these because i recognized the cover and then after realized this is the very first one in the series so i might as well start with this i've been asked quite a few times also if i'm planning on reading christopher pike in any of these childhood favorites and don't worry it's coming this is called the betrayal and i showed this in some kind of video at some point and a bunch of people pointed out that it looks like lana del rey which is very funny Ooh, there's a family tree i don't remember anything about this hello i'm wearing my oh god 1990 shirt this reminds me of the colors of like winnie the pooh which is the shirt that i was wearing in my school photo there are a couple people who come to mind that i had not seen since eighth grade and running into them again as an adult the Winnie the Pooh shirt had a legacy and it was brought up to me as an adult like hey Kayla remember the Winnie the Pooh shirt <laughs> the theme of errors of my ways this some of you I'm, I'm sure have caught on at this point because you're far smarter than me this is not the first book in the Fear Street series this is the first book of four in the fear street saga um which is why while reading this i was like no this isn't good this isn't what i remember and i'm confused this is basically like the origin story of this family um it has to do with like the witch trials and most of it is set in the 1900s and i was like slowly moving through this not super interested in the story and all of the family and like we just have all of these different characters and there's just like constant traumas involved to so like the house is on fire and then the next you know they have a curse on them basically but it was just like so repetitive it was like the dad fell down can't feel his leg the house is on fire the girl got hurt the boy is missing the boy's in another fire and i was waiting for it to become current day i thought we were going through like a timeline a progressing no it just it remained what it was and it was what it was and i don't even know if i've ever read this before and i i've been i've wronged myself so i was like i'm gonna read this one because i know the original fear street series like i now recall it very well i'll put up some of the covers maybe it'll jog your memory as well like this is also its own there's like 20 series within the series this one is called a super chiller so wherever that falls i have no idea there's no number on here so i think as with most of the fear street things you can read them independently so i am gonna do that that wasn't my plan for tonight okay it's another late night update but that thing that keeps happening in my childhood favorites happened again where i unknowingly am reading books 
where the characters are the exact age that I was when I read the book. This happens to me in like every single episode or whatever you want to call these. So Broken Hearts, I don't really want to rate. Um, we're following a character named Erica, who is the 13 year old, and she has these twin sisters. The 90s, like, authors were so obsessed with twins. Twins are in every single book and series, I feel like. But basically the book kicks off with some horseback riding. One of the girls gets hurt. She has a brain injury and a lot of the book revolves around like taking care of her. But then also there are these notes for Valentine's Day. Yes, I just threw on my heart sweater. <laughs> it's weirdly cold this week. It's like that weird time between seasons where you have to turn on the heat in your vehicle in the morning and then you have to use the AC like on your drive home. Anyway, so there are these notes, um, these valentines that are like, rose are red, violets are blue, you're gonna die. And obviously you go into it knowing like the type of story that you're getting. I definitely can't judge it too harshly, but um, no. I remember such a specific feeling that Fear Street used to give me and obviously I'm not a literal child anymore but I just don't I don't see it and then I just started Angus Thongs and Four Frontal Snogging I completely forgot that Georgia is so young she starts the book off I already forgot was it 13 or 14 I've already laughed out loud multiple times um, I've already cringed a couple times so when she says, I am very ugly and need to go into an ugly home, I really felt that. But then she goes on to talk about, like, um, how boys don't like her and, like, does that make her a lesbian? Or, like, does that mean she's going to become a lesbian? And then she also, um, questions if her dad is a transvestite. I hate saying words in books. Every time I point out, like, questionable or problematic out of date harmful content i feel like someone is going to hear me say it and think that i think that it's okay to use certain wording but i just want to use the wording in the book so you understand what the book is saying um her dad owns tweezers and apparently that potentially means that he could walk around in one of mom's 90s and might have to start calling him Daphne. It's clearly a joke, like this whole book is meant to be like humorous and funny and so she's not actually serious, but like it's still like, mm. it's the things you notice, you know, that you wouldn't have noticed the first time around. I, at 13 years old, consuming media, like I was raised by the internet. I cannot drive home how much the internet, like completely, unrestricted internet access at such a young age and such an early time in the internet that I was exposed to everything way too early. The types of jokes that were like on the internet at this time and like the rampant transphobia and homophobia and racism and anti-semitism like that was the core of like internet jokes that I was seeing. When you are a 13 year old and impressionable and this type of joke is all that you see, you're going to have a skewed perspective about like how to respect other human beings. I guarantee there's so many things that I could tell you that I thought or I said or I believed in my early teens that like you would be disappointed in me for and those things still bother me so we may look at this series and think like obviously there was no ill intent with writing anything that i'm about to experience in these 10 books but it will still continue to bother me and i'm gonna talk about it and i think that's okay i think it's important even to, like just for myself to acknowledge the like casual harmful language that existed and that I wouldn't have recognized as that, having no other like influence telling me differently. So today I'm doing my live show for House of Leaves and after that, because I just spent an entire 24 hours participating in a readathon instead of reading my childhood favorites, we're gonna get through as many of these as we can today.
wish me the most luck. So there are definitely some things that I stole from this book series and integrated into my friend group, like the snocking scale, uh, the list of like kissing to touching to like whatever else. Also stole the phrase, the ace gang. I called my friend group that. I Nobody ever called us that. Nobody else in the friend group probably used it. But that's how I would refer to my friends, to like other people. Um, one thing I didn't steal, and I'm very glad, is this idea of ranking each other. It makes me so sad, the idea that like George, these aren't real people, Kayla, oh my god. But basically they r anonymously rank each other on each physical feature. So somebody gave Georgia a zero out of 10 for her nose. And that's like a running theme in the series is that's her biggest insecurity is what she considers her giant nose. Okay, I finished the first book. Rating it is definitely too weird to consider, but I marked basically like similar experiences that I've had to Georgia and how much I related to her throughout this. This is obviously the book that I've read the most, like reread the most in the series, so it was the most familiar to me. Though, her kiss with Robbie, that's the sex god that we're about to read about. Um, it kind of came out of nowhere. He was like dating another girl, there was all of this drama, and then they suddenly just kiss. The main relationships you need to know about, there's Robbie, there's Mossimo, and there's, I'm spoiling the whole series, there's Dave the Laugh. And Dave the Laugh was my favorite in the entire series, but I'm pretty sure they don't even get together it's like way, way late in the series. But I'm very excited to get to that part because I just love it. Liam just came in here while I was reading and read the title of one of the books and said, knocked out by my Nunga Nungas. I've now finished book two. There were some surprising things that happened in here that I definitely thought happened in later books. I liked it a little bit less than the first one because of pacing things. I liked it a little bit more than the first one because Dave the Laugh is in it. I had less issues with this one, but the same issues with this one, the fat phobia was rampant. I'm trying to figure out if it's it's worse to nickname a character slim when they are in fact fat and like that's the joke, or what happened to me in eighth grade, which was I accidentally got into a friendship group with the really popular girls for like a week and they asked if they could call me Big Red and like pretended it was kind of a funny thing and like we were all in on it but they no. I actually met them through the girl I was telling you about earlier who said that I made her look skinny. They were a whole like group of rich girls in the rich neighborhood and the ones who introduced me to weed. They were smoking in an orchard. They were nicer to me than they were the other rich girl in the neighborhood. And then the rich girl in the neighborhood who was my friend proceeded to lock me out of her house when I was over there to hang out because the other girls liked me more and she wouldn't let me back inside her house. And then the other girls like went home because they just lived down the street and I was left in the road for a while waiting for someone to come pick me up. So I don't know, like overt fat phobia or like mean girls pretending to be your friend but like secretly, not so secretly, just calling you by your biggest insecurity. Those three girls are all nurses now. Just a, just a fun side note. <laughs> the talk of Nazis and Hitler was also rampant in here. Basically, she has one teacher that she says is Hitler reincarnated in a gym skirt. She even has a little black mustache. And then refers to her as, as Adolfa throughout the rest of the book. I also rewatched some movies in the last like year, like Euro Trip and Rat Race specifically both have like scenes where there's like a lot of Nazi imagery. And it's more so the fact that media um turns Hitler into like a punchline so even if clearly like these scenes and these discussions are painting Hitler appropriately as like a terrible person it's the fact that it's turning it into like 
a joke and trivializing things that has fucked up so many of us and our perspectives. There are so many things that I thought were funny until I was a grown adult. It's frustrating to see people defending still to this day like as adults on the internet like oh that wasn't a big deal oh people are too sensitive everything these days have just to be pc and i know that these childhood favorites are supposed to be like lighthearted and fun but these things keep bothering me and i know that like in some ways i can't critique something for being a product of its time but it did have an impact like media has an impact on to book three this was the shortest in the series so far. It's called Knocked Out by My Nunga Nungas, and I like how some books like will reference the next title. So in the last book, there was a boy who called boobs Nunga Nungas because if you pull them and let them go, they go Nunga Nunga Nunga. <laughs> anyway, I think this is my favorite because we got a good amount of uh, different boys in here for Georgia to have drama with. It was short and it was fun, and I'm on to the next. Same bad time same bad place i have nothing to really update you on because this was just a filler book nothing really happened and i wonder if louise renison like had a plan for how many books she wanted the series to be or like when she planned on ending it if it was always supposed to be 10 books but i'm starting to feel like not a lot's gonna happen in the next couple but i'm halfway through i just finished number five we now have massimo in the picture who i definitely forgot is like the new lead singer of the stiff dylans which is the band that robbie was the lead singer of but now he's gone he's on a little trip massimo is here she's into him but she misses robbie but there's also dave <laughs> that's my update so i finished book six and seven then he ate my boy entrancers which are fake eyelashes and startled by his furry shorts which you know just read it. These are what we could call the Massimo Chronicles, and they're not my favorite, though relatability is high. Even just this cover and like the obsession that I feel like so many of us had at this age with like looking through magazines, we would get together a group of friends on the weekend and we would make these weird little concoctions of like oatmeal and cucumber and honey and then like spread it all over our faces and our hair and just constantly thinking about how you look every second of the day. She takes a trip to America mostly because like a boy is there and she wants to follow him there and then her parents also happen to be planning a trip. But before I read on I'm currently watching the movie. I'm at the part where they write down their rankings for each other's features. Okay, I'm currently reading Love is a Many Trousered Thing. And since I can't, like, do my makeup and hair like my eighth grade self because I can't find a crimper and I don't know what makeup we were doing. And clothes-wise, it was all about, like, brand names. Like, you remember the day where it was, like, a little logo. If you were a boy, you were wearing, like, Etnies or what else? DC. Yep. And, like, girls would have, like, Roxy or Billabong or something like that. And I definitely didn't own any shirts like that because I wasn't cool and they just didn't exist at thrift stores. So I just can't do that. But we can eat like my eighth grade self and I was trying to figure out what I should grab. Um, so I think we're going to grab Slurpees. I love Slurpees. Because that was a staple. classic a staple. And um, I was trying to think of something that we could eat because like, yeah, I could go to McDonald's and get chicken nuggets and honey. But that's mm. not what we're going to do. So um, a classic meal for my family was um canned ravi really canned anything we ate canned and boxed everything so like tuna helper hamburger helper um chef boy rd so we're gonna get some ravioli and beans and we're gonna make a casserole because i'm pretty sure we had that like once a week in my during my childhood so rob's really gonna enjoy i'm it. excited for you to mm -hmm. eat that just me yeah cheers weird ah! I forgot what these days are like. I just finished book eight and I have changed my shirt. At the grocery store, um, they were getting donations for the breast cancer 
society. And all I had was a $50 bill and then she gave me a shirt and that fits in with my yearbook, which I was just skimming through so I could take some of the footage that I have included going through here. And I saw this page for Run For The Cure, which is a marathon of sorts to find a cure for breast cancer. Um, I might have not actually gone with the school, but I probably went with Girl Guides. I'm pretty sure every single year I've always gone to Run For The Cure, but with like my Girl Guide group or Pathfinder group or what have you. This is kind of a trend throughout all of the yearbooks. I hated picture day. So either like I wouldn't show up for picture day or there are some cases where um, I would like join a club after picture day happened or I would quit a club before picture day happened. So I was just skimming through here and there's a couple like teams that I'm pretty sure I was on. Oh yeah, there's me. I'm not in the whole group photo, but I am in this one with my mouth open, cheering on a teammate. And now of course I'm stuck in the nostalgia of reading the things that people wrote me. <laughs> in the back. Some gems include You Rock Don't Ever Change um, from Laura, which is a nod to Lizzie McGuire. Uh, my friend Jess referenced me and uh, that boy dating and said it's very laughable thinking back on it now. Allie wrote that we had a good time in foods. Just true, the best thing we made was called the Dreamsicle Smoothie. We learned how to make a smoothie in foods class and it was like orange juice and ice cream, I'm pretty sure. Sophie referenced PE and said, no more milk run. Um, yes, we all hated the milk run. It was this, it happened like once a month and we would have to do this like big, long timed run. And there were a couple of us girls who would just hang out at the back of the pack and walk most of it. Lisa said, it's been a good year with you in English. My best friend Dee said, I had a great year with you despite all of our fights, LOL. Lindsay said, you've been extra nice to me all year. I hope we can talk on MSN this summer. A couple boys wrote on this page. Oh dear. And that's that on that. I am now on to the last two books of this. Rob, I really did not need that sound effect. I haven't had this in mm, 15 years. Okay. I'm trying to film. You can't talk your kid like that. What? Rob! What? Now is this going to bring back memories or is it gonna gross me out? That's just good. Is this still good? Yes! Yeah, okay, that's right. I think where you go wrong is if you add meat in it. I keep thinking I'm gonna finish the series and then I get sleepy. That's upside down. Stop in the name of pants was another bit of a filler. I know we do get like some good stuff in every book, like different friendship things. We're on a journey of like a changing relationship between George and her parents. This one was sad because of poor Angus, but we kind of left off on a similar note that we've left off a lot of books and series, so. I did it. I finished it. I loved it. Um, I'm gonna finish up the movie really quick. When's your dad coming back? He wants to take the job in New Zealand. What? The thing about this series is it's the same book 10 times. It really, really could have been one book. Louise Renison passed away, I wanna say like five years ago now, and I will always be very appreciative of her writing the series because it's so fun to read even current day reading it and its issues series of her as an adult and getting to see like who she ended up with if any of the boys you know where she's at what she's doing as a job you know the way that in the shopaholic series you get to see her have a baby and go on with the rest of her life this was just perfect like in its time for me. And the movie, I watched it for the first time when it came out and I was 18. And at that age, I already knew that like it wasn't for me. So 12, 13 years later, it's even more not for me and I can separate myself. There are definitely some very cringy moments and Georgia is simultaneously more irritating and less irritating in the movie with like different scenarios. But I had a good time. Okay, I saved the best book for last. I just realized there's a stain on this. I took off my black shirt because I spilled something on it and then I put this one on instead and there is 
also a stain on it. Let me know what you think of this dress. I feel like it looks weird when you can only see this much of it. But like maybe it looks weird all the time. Maybe it's cute. I can't figure it out. Anyway, here's the book. It's called Kissed by an Angel by Elizabeth Chandler. I feel like if I didn't have proof of me owning this book as a teenager, you wouldn't believe me. So I do have it. In a previous Childhood Favorites, I showed you my purple room and how like ugly and weird it was. And in that set of photos, I found a photo in the closet. There are some questionable things in my closet. Don't ask, literally don't ask. I'm blurring things out. And you can see a tiny sliver of this spine and it took me so long typing things into goodreads trying to figure out what that book was and then i recognized this cover and i freaked out a little bit it took me so long to find on thrift books i know that this has been like combined into i think like the books have been re-released but in combo packs so like three books in one and i saw that some of my friends on goodreads have actually read this just a couple and you didn't like it i don't remember anything about it but i remember reading it multiple times so it must have been a favorite it says it's about ivy who's a beautiful dreamer who's always believed in angels and tristan has everything he needs right here on earth when ivy meets tristan it's the love of a lifetime when he dies her heart is broken and her belief in angels vanishes but then he's gonna return as an angel <laughs> between this and my journal like the religious imagery is a lot also, on a completely different note, I'll also be watching 13 tonight, which is like a very different tone. <laughs> I have to be honest, I have no idea what's going on. I don't understand what I'm reading. I might actually check out the audiobook. I'm on page 70 and I feel like I need to start from the beginning. The book starts out with a sweet scene in the backseat of a car between Tristan and Ivy, and then they're just getting ready to drive away to dinner. And she says, you don't have to hurry, I'm not hungry anymore. And he goes, I ruined your appetite? She shook her head. I guess I'm all filled up with happiness. <laughs> I might need to switch back and forth between this and 13 just to preserve my sanity. How do we fit these themes together? We've got blonde teenage girls at the front, um, both in very different life situations. Okay, so in this movie, we've got Tracy, and this is Vanessa Hudgens' film debut. <laughs> My favorite thing about this movie has always been like the coloring and the tones and the way that it's filmed and I think this movie made me recognize that, start recognizing it in books. How the experience watching or reading a book will often like mirror how the character is feeling. So throughout this movie Tracy starts to like do drugs and, and get into a dangerous friendship and just do some questionable things and start to lose her sense of reality and so the cinematography reflects that. Here's what's happening in the book. We've got Ivy who like talks to angels. She's in this like drama club and she is walking above like water? I don't understand. And she has to recite this poetry or she's gonna like fall in the water and then she asks the water angel to help her. There's this boy named Tristan, there's another boy named Gregory. Every single scene has to do with food. Like, they won't stop talking about food. Who's hungry, who hasn't eaten, what's for dessert, what they're gonna eat, what they just ate. That's where I'm at. I don't remember any of it. I remember seeing this scene for the first time. This is like the relatable moment where you feel like you don't fit in. <clears throat> How come? Because I look stupid, hello? <sighs> And her mom just immediately, like, she doesn't have money to buy clothes, but she wants to support her child so much that she just, like, speeds down to this little spot and buys her all new stuff. I remember watching this with my friends and being like, this mom is so cool. Me and my friend were watching this movie and she got her tongue pierced. And naturally, we desperately needed our tongues pierced. Didn't get it done, but we were, like, looking at the information about the movie. It said that Nikki Reed's tongue was really pierced, but Evan Reed Rachel Wood had a fake one so me and my friend went to I think it was probably Claire's and they had these little suction cup tongue rings so you basically just like suck on it and it gets stuck to your tongue and we wore that for like the next entire year like almost every day I feel like at one point she swallowed one we had to go get a new one I constantly like uh probably lied to people and told them that it was real I'm halfway through the book 
I haven't remembered any of it yet and I feel really terrible that I picked this book and I, I I feel guilty about it. Here's a taste of what I have to read. Ivy Gregory and Andrew arrived home late and Maggie looked miffed. Philip, of course, didn't care. He, Tristan, and his new school pal Sammy were playing a video game. Okay, that didn't sound that crazy. Everything keeps starting with like listing every single character in the room. This person, this person, this person are doing this. These people are over here. This person is doing this. And then the scene begins. I hate it. I'm also halfway through this. It shit is going down. I'm kind of glad I didn't pick this for um the movie night because it's there's not a lot to give commentary on. It's just it's intense. Oh my god. Back to the book. I'm at like 70% of the way through and the car accident that kills Tristan only just happened now. Like it gives away the entire book. I have come upon some scenes that I remember reading, thank goodness, but I still like, I don't feel anything towards this. I don't feel, I don't really understand why it was a favorite. I feel like there must have been a moment or a twist or something that happens in here that did it for me. Update for 13, I finished it and it's just as good as I remember. Rewatching is a weird experience, like there's always some uncomfortable moments watching as an adult and not being a teen and being able to like connect with the teenage characters. Things just feel a little like weirder to watch. But the movie overall is like intentionally uncomfortable and it accomplishes everything it set out to do and I think it's a masterpiece and I love it. Uh, I finished Kissed by an Angel. I regret leaving this till the end. I thought we were leaving the best for last. I was so wrong. This book is not good. And also, like, one of the twists of the book just, like, doesn't make sense that it's a twist. Basically, the book opens with the car accident where we see Tristan die. And it's like he's speeding towards something and he can't stop the car basically is what you gather from the scene ivy's yelling at him to like stop and why aren't you pressing the brakes but like he's obviously pressing the brakes but then the last page is like um so he is like an angel and he's trying to connect with ivy and he has this other angel or something that he's working with and like he has to figure out the mystery of what happened to them but so then he goes um he like reveals his perspective in the accident and he's like i was pressing the brakes to the floor and they weren't working like somebody must have cut the brakes but like that's such an obvious like that's obvious already especially because of all the characters that we're following and all of like the sketchy behavior and realizing that they're like bad guys in the book like obviously they're responsible I don't understand. I felt nothing. I remembered little. I feel terrible about this pick. I thought it would be, if nothing else, like entertaining or like smutty or anything. But then I read on here that this is <laughs> YA. I, I thought it was adult. I thought I was in for something. And I'm ending the whole vlog on a bit of a weird note. But let's just wrap up this vlog. It's gone on long enough. I read 15 books for this video. These 10 were frankly a little disappointing, but still fun. These two were admittedly poor picks and I need to stop thinking of entire series as my favorite and do a better job of pinpointing my actual favorites. These two were a little more random and they were just okay and then this one completely stood the test of time and i might continue to reread this in my future so i had a good time let me know if you had a good time i definitely didn't have as much like reminiscing going on while reading these books i thought these were going to be a lot of like all-time favorites and i was going to feel all the feels and i did get some of that but in a few cases i didn't i hope you enjoyed and i will see you for my next one ninth grade is gonna be a, a good time bye